Glucosamine, Wikipedia Audio Glucosamine is an amino sugar and a prominent precursor in the biochemical synthesis of glycosylated proteins and lipids. Glucosamine is part of the structure of the polysaccharides chitosan and chitin, which compose the exoskeletons of crustaceans and other arthropods, as well as the cell walls of fungi and many higher organisms. Glucosamine is one of the most abundant monosaccharides. It is produced commercially by the hydrolysis of crustacean exoskeletons or, less commonly, by fermentation of a grain such as corn or wheat. Evidence for the effectiveness of glucosamine as a dietary supplement is mixed. In the United States, it is one of the most common dietary supplements used by adults that is neither a vitamin nor a mineral. Oral glucosamine is a dietary supplement and is not a pharmaceutical drug. It is illegal in the U.S. to market any dietary supplement as a treatment for any disease or condition. Glucosamine is marketed to support the structure and function of joints, and the marketing is targeted to people suffering from osteoarthritis. Medical Uses Commonly sold forms of glucosamine are glucosamine sulfate, glucosamine hydrochloride, and n glucosamine. Of the three commonly available forms of glucosamine, only glucosamine sulfate is given a likely effective rating for treating osteoarthritis. Glucosamine is often sold in combination with other supplements such as chondroitin sulfate and methyl sulfonylmethane. Glucosamine, along with commonly used chondroitin, is not routinely prescribed to treat people who have symptomatic osteoarthritis of the knee, as there is insufficient evidence that this treatment is helpful. As is common with heavily promoted dietary supplements, the claimed benefits of glucosamine are based principally on clinical and laboratory studies. Clinical studies are divided, with some reporting relief from arthritic pain and stiffness while higher quality studies report no benefit above placebo. There is no evidence to date that consumption of glucosamine by sport participants will prevent or limit joint damage after injury. In a randomized placebo-controlled trial, glucosamine supplementation had no additional effect on any rehabilitation outcome when given to athletes after anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction. One clinical study over three years showed that glucosamine in doses of 1,500 mg per day is safe to use. Glucosamine with or without chondroitin elevates the international normalized ratio in individuals who are taking the blood thinner, warfarin. It may also interfere with the efficacy of chemotherapy for treating cancer symptoms. Adverse effects may include stomach upset, constipation, diarrhea, headache, and rash. There are case reports of people who have chronic liver disease and a worsening of their condition with glucosamine supplementation. More high-quality clinical research is needed before recommending glucosamine in pregnancy. Since glucosamine is usually derived from the shells of shellfish, it may be unsafe for those with shellfish allergy. However, many manufacturers of glucosamine derived from shellfish include a warning that those with a seafood allergy should consult a healthcare professional before taking the product. Alternative, non-shellfish derived forms of glucosamine are available. Another concern has been that the extra glucosamine could contribute to diabetes by interfering with the normal regulation of the hexosamine biosynthesis pathway, but several investigations found no evidence that this occurs. Other studies conducted in lean or obese subjects concluded that oral glucosamine at standard doses does not affect insulin resistance. Adverse Effects and Drug Interactions Glucosamine is naturally present in the shells of shellfish, 
animal bones, bone marrow, and fungi. D-glucosamine is made naturally in the form of glucosamine 6-phosphate, and is the biochemical precursor of all nitrogen-containing sugars. Specifically in humans, glucosamine 6-phosphate is synthesized from fructose 6-phosphate and glutamine by glutamine fructose 6-phosphate transaminase as the first step of the hexosamine biosynthesis pathway. The end product of this pathway is uridine diphosphate and acetyl glucosamine, which is then used for making glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans, and glycolipids. As the formation of glucosamine 6-phosphate is the first step for the synthesis of these products, glucosamine may be important in regulating their production, however, the way that the hexosamine biosynthesis pathway is actually regulated, and whether this could be involved in contributing to human disease remains unclear. Most glucosamine is manufactured by processing chitin from the shells of shellfish including shrimp, lobsters, and crabs. To meet the demands of vegetarians and others with objections to shellfish, Manufacturers have brought glucosamine products to market made using fungus Aspergillus niger and from fermenting corn. Glucosamine was first prepared in 1876 by George Lederhose by the hydrolysis of chitin with concentrated hydrochloric acid. The stereochemistry was not fully determined until the 1939 work of Walter Hayworth. In the United States, glucosamine is not approved by the Food and Drug Administration for medical use in humans. Since glucosamine is classified as a dietary supplement in the U.S., evidence of safety is required by FDA regulations, and evidence of efficacy is not required so long as it is not advertised as a treatment for a medical condition. In most of Europe, Glucosamine is approved as a medical drug and is sold in the form of glucosamine sulfate. In this case, evidence of safety and efficacy is required for the medical use of glucosamine and several guidelines have recommended its use as an effective and safe therapy for osteoarthritis. The Task Force of the European League Against Rheumatism Committee has granted glucosamine sulfate a level of toxicity of 5 in a 0 to 100 scale, and recent ORSI guidelines for hip and knee osteoarthritis indicate an acceptable safety profile. By 2014, the ORSI did not recommend glucosamine for disease modification, and considered it uncertain for symptom relief in knee osteoarthritis. Biochemistry Manufacturing In 2013, without admitting fault, manufacturer Rexall Sundown, Inc. and NBTY, Inc., agreed to pay up to $2 million to settle consumer claims related to the wording of certain claims on the packaging of glucosamine bottles sold at Costco under the Kirkland label. History Legal Status United States Europe Class Action Lawsuits In August 2012, a class action lawsuit was filed in New York claiming that 21st Century Healthcare, Inc. falsely advertises that its glucosamine 750 chondroitin 600 triple strength dietary supplements will restore lost cartilage. In April 2013, a San Diego man launched a proposed class action lawsuit in California federal court accusing Nutramax Laboratories, Walmart, and Rite Aid of falsely advertising the effectiveness of glucosamine. Since glucosamine is a precursor for glycosaminoglycans, and glycosaminoglycans are a major component of cartilage, Research has focused on the potential for supplemental glucosamine to beneficially influence cartilage structure and alleviate arthritis. Although its use as a supplement appears safe, 
the evidence does not support it being universally effective, as clinical trials have not provided results that support its efficacy in 100% of human subjects. Two studies measured the concentrations of glucosamine in the synovial fluid and plasma after oral administration of glucosamine sulfate to both healthy volunteers and people with osteoarthritis. Research In the first study, glucosamine sulfate was given to healthy volunteers in doses of 750, 1,500, or 3,000 mg once daily. In the second study, oral glucosamine sulfate capsules were given daily for two weeks to 12 people with osteoarthritis. Glucosamine concentrations in plasma and synovial fluid increased significantly from baseline levels and the levels in the two fluids were highly correlated. The authors interpreted that these levels could be biologically advantageous to articular cartilage but the levels are still 10 to 100 fold lower than required to positively affect the cartilage to build new tissue. Glucosamine sulfate uptake in synovial fluid may be as much as 20%, or could be negligible, indicating no biological significance. Some studies have shown efficacy of glucosamine supplementation for dogs with osteoarthritis pain particularly in combination with other nutraceuticals like chondroitin while others have not. A trial of oral combination capsules in dogs with osteoarthritis found no benefit on either gait analysis or subjective assessments by the veterinarian or owner. The use of glucosamine in equine medicine exists, but one meta-analysis judged extant research too flawed to be of value in guiding treatment of horses. A number of studies have measured the bioavailability of glucosamine after oral administration to horses. When given as a single oral dose with or without chondroitin sulfate to 10 horses, glucosamine was detected in the blood with a maximum level of 10.6 micrograms per milliliter at 2 hours after dosing. Another study examined both the serum and the joint synovial fluid after nasogastric or intravenous administration of 20 mg-kg glucosamine hydrochloride to eight adult horses. Although joint fluid concentrations of glucosamine reached 9 to 15 micromolar following intravenous dosing, it was only 0.3 to 0.7 micromolar with nasogastric dosing. The authors calculated that these glucosamine synovial fluid levels achieved by the oral route were 500-fold lower than that required to have a positive effect on the metabolism of cartilage cells. A follow-up study by the same research group compared glucosamine sulfate with glucosamine hydrochloride at the same dose in eight horses and found a higher fluid concentration with the sulfate preparation. They concluded that these higher synovial fluid levels obtained with the sulfate derivative were still too low to have a relevant biological effect on articular cartilage. A three-month trial of an oral dosage regime of a commercial preparation of glucosamine sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, and methyl sulfonylmethane was performed in veteran horses with no effect on gait stiffness, with exercise alone in the control group being effective. The intravenous use of a combination of N-acetylglucosamine, pentosan polysulfate and sodium hyaluronate in horses with surgically induced osteoarthritis saw improvements in X-ray changes to the cartilage but not histologically or in biochemical outcomes, suggesting more evidence is needed for this combination and route of administration. Humans Bioavailability Veterinary Medicine